Hey guys, welcome back to Cardio Visual for another episode of CV Health Talks. Today we are going to be talking about valve disease. Today our guests include Lindsay Clark from the from the Alliance for Aging Research and Dr. Allison Ali, an interventional cardiologist. Uh, today we're raising awareness for Valve Disease Day hosted by the Alliance on February 22nd, so a little build up for that. And we hope to save lives and empower patients by educating on valve disease, its symptoms, and management. So, Lindsay, I'm going to hand this off to you. What is Valve Disease Day? Can you give our audience a little background? Of course. And Shannon, thanks so much for having me on to talk about Valve Disease Day. Uh, valve Disease Day takes place every February 22nd, so during American Heart Month. And it was started by my organization, the Alliance for Aging Research, when it became really increasingly apparent to us and a lot of others in the space that people don't know what valve disease is. Um, and this is despite the fact that it impacts as many as 11 million Americans. Um, we actually did a survey and found that three out of four people don't know little to nothing about valve disease. So the majority of people don't know what valve disease is. And so the seriousness of the disease combined with the fact that symptoms can be difficult to detect, they're often dismissed as a normal part of aging, which it isn't, um, makes this lack of awareness particularly dangerous. So we want to encourage people to understand that heart valve disease can usually be successfully treated in patients of all ages um, if it's treated in time. So this makes this education and awareness effort particularly important. So we started the Heart Valve Disease Awareness Day campaign so that people will better understand the risk factors, the symptoms, we can improve detection and treatment and ultimately save lives. So on February 22nd and throughout the year, we're joined by about 100 organizations. It's professional societies, nonprofits, advocacy organizations, foundations, hospitals and heart centers who all come together uh, on this day and throughout the year to help spread common messaging about valve disease. We're also joined by thousands of advocates. So it's the patients, the caregivers, the clinicians, the people who've been touched by valve disease or seen people touched by valve disease to help spread the message about how important it is that we listen to our hearts and we understand our risk factors and symptoms. So they're all engaging on February 22nd. I'd encourage all of your listeners to engage as well. They can go to valvediseaseday.org to learn more. They can take the Listen to Your Heart Pledge, join our Twitter chat on February 22nd, and tune into our virtual conference that day. So thanks, Shannon. Of course. Thank you so much for joining us, Lindsay. And Absolutely. Lindsay and I thought, you know, how can we better spread awareness? Uh, and we thought, why not bring Dr. Ali on to give you guys an educational session? And doctors, you can send this to your patients, or if you're a patient on here watching, you can send this to your friends, your family. So Lindsay, thank you again for joining us. And we're going to move on to our Q&A session now. So just to give you guys a little background on Dr. Allison Ali, uh, he's an interventional cardiologist who's trained in both Philly and the Mayo Clinic. Uh, he's been in practice for the last 10 years and his specialties include valvular heart interventions and heart valve research. So first, do you mind just explaining what is heart valve disease for those who don't know? Yeah, thanks Shannon and thanks for the kind invitation. Uh, heart valve disease is a disorder of one of the four uh, or one or more of the four heart valves in the heart. It could be that the valve is leaky, or what we call regurgitation, or it could be narrow, what we call stenosis. Uh, basically, the valve does not function as normal. What are the symptoms of a heart valve disease? The, the symptoms uh, of heart valve disease uh, will include shortness of breath, uh, swelling of the feet, uh, fatigue, uh, sometimes there's generalized weakness, uh, and sometimes they are difficult to, to um, identify as being valvular in uh, etiology because most patients will have these symptoms from other, other conditions. So, you know, one has to be astute when we're looking at our patients when they come to us with these symptoms to, to make sure that they are not from a valvular problem. What can cause valve disease? Well, there's, there are a variety of causes. Uh, some is uh, congenital. Some people are born with a heart valve problem. Uh, for a long time, it was rheumatic. Uh, people that had rheumatic uh, in, um, infection as a child may later in life develop uh, heart valve problems. Uh, sometimes mm -hmm. just aging. Uh, you know, a, a most common form of heart valve disease is called a senile aortic stenosis, which as we get older, we get calcium on the valves, and the valve can narrow. 
Uh, sometimes it's a combination of uh, infections, endocarditis. Uh, sometimes it's a coronary artery disease. Somebody has a myocardial infarction that affects the heart muscle, may end up affecting the heart valve. And sometimes we don't know. Some, some medications may cause heart valve disease. Sometimes we've had people that have had uh, radiation therapy uh, for breast cancer, other cancers. They may end up with valvular problems later in life. Uh, so as we do life-saving therapies for other conditions, they may end up, you know, over time having uh, unwanted effects on the heart valves. What are the risk factors for heart valve disease? Uh, risk factors include you know, diabetes, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, the, the traditional risk factors. Obviously, e e e aging can be a risk factor. The older we get, the more likely we are to get heart valve problems. Uh, so those are the more, more common risk factors. The research shows that uh, African Americans develop valve disease at younger ages. Can you speak a little? Can you speak a little bit to that? Yes, uh, we've seen that uh, African Americans would tend to have a more significant heart valve disease at a younger age for several reasons. Uh, a lot of African Americans have these traditional risk factors that may lead to development of heart valve problems: uh, high blood pressure, uh, diabetes high cholesterol, renal problems. You know, if you're on dialysis, you may end up having a valvular problem because of calcium. Uh, the other thing is that African-Americans tend to have a shorter life expectancy compared to Caucasian Americans. So most times, you know, we see these heart problems in a younger population of African-Americans. Uh, all those, and then the socioeconomic factors does not help. You know, lack of access to healthcare, insurance issues, you know, uh, those things may cause problems and lead to late detection of heart valve problems. Things that could have been corrected with medicines, uh, if, if patients are not seen on time, that can be a problem later in life. And what other disparities exist, let's say with other populations as well, are there any? Yeah, I mean, there's a wide variety of disparities, you know, I think in African Americans and non-African Americans, Hispanics, even uh, American Indians, that you know, there's, there's a socioeconomic issue, uh, access to care. Uh, then there's the mistrust or distrust of the healthcare system. Uh, there's a delay in decision making. Uh, there's a lack of access to, you know, um, programs or hospitals that may help care for the patients. Uh, education, education gaps, economic gaps. All those things lead to added delay in treatment or misdiagnosis or not or lack of treatment at all. Patients may never get to see us and they may suffer mm -hmm. for years and years with the heart, heart valve problems. What options are available for valve disease? Yeah, there are several. Uh, I think the underlying uh, uh, foundational treatment is always medical, med medications. You know, it's not everything that we have to operate on or do something for. Uh, it's simple things like controlling blood pressure, controlling diabetes, controlling cholesterol, Exercise and diet, a lot of times, this can help stave off significant heart valve problems. Now, if the patient goes along and develops you know, a significant heart valve problem, then the options become either surgery, which can be an open operation to replace or repair the heart valve, or but more commonly nowadays, we have what are called transcatheter options, less invasive options, where we can go through the groin and, and repair or replace the valve with minimal impact on the patient. So there's a variety of options uh, to treatment of heart valve disease from medicines to surgical therapy to what are called transcatheter or less invasive therapies. What could happen if we leave valve disease untreated? Yeah, there are several complications. You know, number one is the development of heart failure where patients cannot breathe, they are swollen, they have a lot of fluid uh, buildup, uh, they can't really do most of their daily activities, they're really miserable. Um, you know, the valve may end up affecting the heart. Um, the, then patients may die from this. You know, there's a lot mm -hmm. of people that have died from untreated heart valve disease. So it's this progression of going into heart failure, which is usually the most common endpoint. And from there, it can affect the kidneys, the lungs, and ultimately, it may lead to a loss of life. At what point should patients say to themselves, you know, man, I should really go see a doctor? Well, if a patient has any symptoms or they're concerned that they may have an underlying heart valve disease or the condition, they should talk to their primary care doctor who mm -hmm. can do some tests, including an ultrasound of their heart or refer them to a cardiologist. I don't think anybody should delay care for this condition because this is a, this is, this, these are really treatable conditions and nobody should 
die from untreated heart valve condition. Uh, I think mm -hmm. that a diagnosis is made by listening to the patient's heart and doing an ultrasound to figure out what the issue is. And then there, there could be different therapies for, like we talked about, medicines or even surgery or, or less invasive options. So we should not, we should encourage everybody to please talk to their doctors, rule out a major heart valve condition as part of the routine medical care. And last but not least, why is increased awareness for valve disease so important? Yeah, thank you. That's a great question, uh, uh, Shannon. You know, for, for years and years, uh, the focus on cardiovascular disease has been not only heart valve, but a lot of it has been coronary disease. You know, most patients know about heart attacks, they know about strokes, they know about heart failure. Uh, even though heart valve conditions have always been there, but it has not been as uh, popular, I, I must say, as the other problems that affect the heart. And we that we specialize in this have recognized that this is a major component of morbidity and mortality amongst our patients. And we have to spread the word. We have to continue to educate people on heart valve conditions for several reasons. Number one, these are common conditions can, that can be easily treated. And number two, if left untreated, they can cause harm and lead to loss of life. And number three, they are widespread and they can, we have really good options and tools for treating our patients. So. Education and awareness is critical. Heart valve disease should just be as common as breast cancer or as coronary or heart attacks and strokes. It's very, very important that we continue to educate the general populace about these conditions.